I'm Steve Mathias. I'm the Vice President for Global Military Sales and Strategy at Bell. Thank you, Steve. Steve, welcome to ADO's chat room. Uh, well, can you please talk about uh, Bell's participation in Dubai Asia 2021, especially after the pandemic when everything was standstill and you're back for the year show? Yeah, so it's, a, it's really great to be here at the Dubai Air Show. It's a, a very well put together show and it's an opportunity for people to get back together. And I think uh, our corral, our chalet, in particular, it's been very busy and, and it's really good to see. So here at for Bell, we've got our Bell 505 and the Bell 429. We also have a Haas weapon system that's a, a that could be put on a commercial aircraft to make it a, a more militarized platform. And so that's primarily what we have in our uh, area. But the the Bell the Bell Boeing B22 is also here on display, and will be flying throughout the the week. So what are your prime focus in, in terms of your products, which are you displaying in? So my, my job at Bell is really a, a defense focus. So I, I do commercial products to foreign militaries. I do our Bell uh, purposely built military aircraft to militaries. So what I'm doing here primarily in this region is for V-22, AH-1 Zulu Viper, UH-1 Yankee Venom, as well as our, all of our commercial platforms that could be sold to foreign militaries uh, to give them a very cost-effective uh, exportable capability. So in terms of um, the product that you're discussing, how has been the response till now for, from the UAE government? For the? For the military uh, aircraft? Oh, well, very good. So I think uh, you know, there's a lot of opportunity here in, in the Emirates. There's also in this region, there's a lot of opportunity for Bell, which is just an amazing company that builds innovative platforms today. And we're one of the few OEMs in the world that are really looking into the future vertical lift space as well. So it doesn't matter where I go around the globe, but certainly here in the Emirates, uh, people are very interested in what Bell is doing now and in the future. Right. Uh, every region has a different military challenge for themselves. What do you feel is the most prominent military challenge for the Middle East area which Bell can solve with its products? Uh, well, one such area is uh, the, the, the distances that you have to carry uh, cover here regardless of what the mission set is for each of the, the the national security objectives within the governments but speed and range are absolutely critical uh, and i believe bell offers several products but certainly the bell boeing b22 osprey is a, a platform that would very well served in this region and then on the other side of the is the uh, the marinization piece because obviously there's a lot of water in the region uh our ah1 zulu viper uh1 venom uh, Yankee Venom are uh, platforms that are marinized and can certainly well suit, suit are well suited to uh, serve the capabilities here in the region. Okay, if I want to go a little more deep into it, okay, let's say uh, technically, what Bell is offering to Middle East, which is not, compared to its other competitors, for specifically for the Middle East military challenges, what do you think are something which is very specific with Bell, which will which will take it's like a USB, which will be better off than the company. Yeah, I, I think the first thing that comes to the top of my mind goes back to the speed and range of the V2, V22 Osprey. Uh, whether you have a personal recovery requirement, whether you have a VVIP requirement to move uh, senior personnel quickly, uh, the, the V22 Osprey is the only aircraft in the world that provides a vertical lift takeoff capability that has speed and range and the capacity to carry significant loads. Now, recently, Bell rolled out uh, the first AH-1Z uh, helicopters for Bahrain. The first lot was just uh, uh, rolled out it. So how has been the response from Bahrain regarding that? Uh, it's a, been a great response. Uh, first, it's the only attack helicopter in the world that is at the point of production built from uh, marinized, right? So it's the only attack helicopter that is specifically built to work in the harsh environments uh, of this salt water. Uh, so from that perspective, certainly the Bahraini uh, military are very happy with the platform that they are getting, and it's extraordinarily capable. The aircraft is less costly to acquire and certainly much less expensive to operate for a life cycle cost. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us something more about the, the customizations or the capabilities that AH-17 uh, has for the Middle East region? Uh, well, the H1 Zulu Viper, the, the Bell product has a, a significantly better uh, 
siding system, which is important for this region. Obviously, it's got an air-to-air -air capability, which is the only attack helicopter, uh, U.S.-made attack helicopter that's got that capability. Uh, Long-range precision fires, uh, Link 16, and the, the capability of that attack helicopter is, is pretty significant. Are you looking for the specific helicopter for UAE as well, to, for the market of UAE? I, I think the, uh, the, the capabilities of that aircraft can really meet any attack helicopter requirement, whether it's here in the Emirates or if, whether it's, you know, Europe, uh, Asia Pacific. Uh, again, I believe it's the best attack helicopter on the market right now. It's certainly the least expensive and the least expensive to operate with the most capability. So are, you pitching that, uh, are you pitching it here for the Dubai Air Show as well? I, for every country that there's a requirement, I'm definitely pitching it. So uh, if uh, if the UAE were to come and talk to us about attack helicopters, I would absolutely be happy to sit down and talk to them. Great. Thank you so much, Steve. It was a pleasure talking to you. All right. Thanks a Thank lot. Thank you.